mean, uh, you know, huge room for not that many people, I guess. Um, so yeah, I will be um, talking a bit about uh, Nuxt.js, uh, which is especially, I will be focusing on the isomorphic part of, uh, of uh, Nuxt.js. And um, you can follow the talk on your own screen, uh, either smartphone, laptop, if you go to that link over there, um, you should be able to follow along on your own screen. Not that this is a huge um, room, but anyway, it might be fun, especially to see the code uh, a bit bigger. <coughs> okay, so first thing, um, I will introduce myself. So my name is uh, David Guijarro, uh, challenging last name for non-Spanish speakers. Um, and I am um, working currently in the beautiful city of Hamburg as a web chapter lead for ShareNow, uh, the brand that used to be, or the company that used to be Car2Go, um, only like two months ago. Um, so yeah, also you have there my email and my Twitter um, in case you want to reach out. Okay, so um, yeah, first thing, what is Nuxt? <laughs> so basically, Nuxt is a quite opinionated uh, framework uh, built on top of Vue.js. Um, I don't know who of you are currently working with Vue. Okay, cool, nice. Currently learning, not okay, cool. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, who has no clue what Vue.js is about? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, is anybody working now with Nuxt? Okay, cool. Only one. You probably won't learn that much, I think. <laughs> okay, cool. So basically, yeah, as I was saying, it's a very opinionated uh, framework built on top of Vue.js. Um, as you guys, uh, the ones using Vue.js currently, you can probably relate to this, uh, Vue.js is quite flexible, quite open. It's true that uh, it enforces some good practices, let's say, but basically it allows you to do whatever you want with your code. Um, Nuxt, on the other hand, is a layer on top of Vue that tries to promote convention over code or convention over configuration. Uh, so basically, um, if you follow these conventions, everything just kind of works out, works out of the box. Um, so yeah, super short intro on Vue.js for whoever is not familiar with it. Uh, Vue.js is quite similar to React. Uh, there's, there are also uh, important differences, uh, but it's uh, component-based, um, so kind of the same as React. And uh, the main difference uh, when you look at the Vue.js code or a Vue.js application is probably the fact that Vue normally uses uh, what they call single file, co single file components. So these are uh, files with a .vue extension. And um, the point of these files is that you have everything related to a component inside one file. Uh, so you have your code, but also you have your template and you have your styles all in one file. So once we get into the, um, into the code, uh, you will probably notice it. Okay, <clears throat> what else is Next? So Next um, is, uh, or what gives uh, us Next? Next gives us several different things. So on one hand, it gives, me, it gives us uh, basically server-side rendering and static site generation out of the box. It just works. You basically don't, do, don't need to do anything to make it work. Uh, it also, as long as we follow the uh, conventions, it also gives us uh, routing out of the box, uh, state management out of the box, some other stuff. Uh, 
the good point or the good thing about Nuxt, uh, in my opinion, is that um, it just works uh, if you follow the conventions, but you can always configure uh, some stuff to match your, your needs. Okay, so when to use Nuxt? Um, let's say we have a public website, um, like one portal or one marketing uh, website or any kind of website that you don't have to log in. Um, and let's say we are interested in, have, in having a fast, first meaningful pane, so we want to show the user some content, something, as fast as possible. Uh, and let's say we have some CEO requirements. We want our website to rank high in uh, Google for making more money, that kind of stuff. Uh, in my opinion, these are like the <coughs> best uh, cases to use uh, Nuxt.js, especially in probably, depending on, on how much um, new content you need to publish or how often do you need to publish uh, new content, you can either run it on server-side rendering uh, mode or you can run it on static-side uh, generation mode if you don't have that many um, content changes. Okay, on the other hand, let's say we have what we understand uh, for a web application where uh, your user would go in, in your website and log in and then make some, um, I don't know, transactions with the website, change his details, that kind of stuff. Um, for that, um, I would say maybe. It really depends on how much do you value this point of convention uh, over configuration. If, um, if you or your team um, are comfortable and familiar with Vue and with writing your own routing, your own state management, uh, that kind of stuff, then probably Nuxt.js is not for you. Uh, if you, on the other hand, want to um, yeah, try to be fast or not pay that much attention to routing, to um, that kind of stuff, then you can always use Nuxt.js in um, in SPA mode, and it will give you all these uh, advantages of like just working. Okay, how to use it? Uh, of course, you can use it in a thousand different ways. I showed here how we are currently using it um, at ShareNow or Car2Go for the Car2Go um, public website. Um, so basically, we have. Uh, the content on the first hand uh, managed by content managers. And uh, this content, uh, we have it exposed as, as an API. We are using a headless CMS for this, which basically allows us to grab the content we need uh, as JSON uh, from, a, from an API. Um, it really doesn't matter where your content lives. It doesn't matter if it's your uh, like a raw database, uh, or an API, a custom solution you're using, as long as you can expose it uh, as JSON or other format, maybe, I don't know. Um, but as long as you're exposing it, uh, it should be fine. Then we have a middleware layer when we, where we do two different things. Uh, the first thing we do is transforming uh, whatever comes from the API. Uh, we, transform in, we transform it to match our needs. So we, for example, remove some uh, properties of each object that we are not interested in, like IDs, um, maybe modification, um, or author, um, that kind of stuff. So things that you don't want to expose to your end user for whatever reason. Uh, we do that, and we also transform the shape of the object a bit so that um, it matches better our requirements for the presentation layer. Uh, this is the first uh, use we give uh, our middleware. The second use is 
we cache um, we cache all these transformations uh, so that the next time the the application uh, needs to grab an endpoint, uh, we just serve it from the cache instead of going through all the transformation and the request to the to the content API and so on. Uh, next step for us is uh, from the middleware, we go to, or the data goes to the Nuxt application actually in server side rendering mode, uh, running on, it's just a Node.js application, uh, runs somewhere, it doesn't matter also, AWS, um, uh, Kubernetes cluster, whatever. Uh, it has to run somewhere in a server. And then from there, it gets uh, delivered to the browser. Um, of course, uh, the good point of this is that Nux, we use it Nux, uh, we use Nux for serving our website. Uh, the good point is that you can also use it for, um, well, not Nux, but you can use the data that you get from from the API. You can use it on your our. We use it on our Android apps, also our iOS apps, um, and in the future, you can use it anywhere you want, a fridge uh, maybe, um, like a smart fridge or something or whatever other device comes in the future because at the end this is, this is just um, JSON and this is just data so you can consume it from anywhere. Okay, so let's, I guess let's get started. Okay, so first thing to um, to get started with Nuxt would be obviously to start the project. Um, you can see here um, a capture, a, like a GIF animation of, of a console, uh, and it's using, as you can see, npm, npm, npx create Nuxt app. Uh, create Nuxt app is basically the same thing than create React app, if you're familiar with that. Uh, so we will create a new project. Um, it will also ask you for some details. Basically allows you to use or to choose uh, a, a UI framework if you want one. Uh, of course you can decide not to go with one. Uh, it also allows, allows you to choose your server-side rendering, uh, your server-side framework, sorry. Um, there are a few options they will show here. You can use Express or you can use uh, some other stuff. Um, you can choose your testing framework as well um, between, I think, ABBA and YEST. So both of them will work out of the box. Um, you can use whether you want to use uh, LinkedIn or not. And I think the most important or most valuable, at least for me, Part is that it will give you, if you want to, if you, it will give you um, instant PWA. Okay, so now our project is started and we want to build a new page. So basically, um, when you run MPX uh, create Nux app, um, it will give you a scaffold uh, and it will give you amongst many other things, a pages folder. So for Nuxt, um, a page is a route. So whatever you put in your pages, fo in your pages folder, um, there will be routes. And inside your pages folder, you will put view files, so single file components, uh, which are actually components. Um, so whatever you put on the first level of your pages uh, folder, there will be routes. Uh, whatever you put in second and so on uh, levels of your uh, pages folder, it will be nested routes. So in this case, we will have uh, pages. I have an index view and I have a folder called things and then ID view. So I will have this, um, the index.view will be served on the, the root path and uh, then I will have a, a, a URL saying slash things slash something. Uh, yeah, so that will just work. Uh, the good also point or the, the interesting point about this is that 
whatever um, component, whatever file you name, starting with the uh, Lodash, will give you uh, um, a dynamic uh, parameter on your queries, on your, on your, um, on your path. So then you can always access it uh, inside your component through this dollar root route dollar params dollar in this case ID. Okay, so here's a small piece of code. Okay, the demo is not working. Too many requests, but anyway, um, so you can see here exactly that I, is it big enough for you guys? Yeah? Hmm? Okay, I'll try to do that. Okay, okay, cool. Um, so yeah, this is um, a code sandbox, which is basically an ID that you can uh, run on your um, on your browser and then embed in a presentation. Um, so yeah, as you can see, I have an index view page and a greetings uh, folder with a language, uh, well, Lodash language um, page. So that means that this page that is not working now for some reason will be served from in this case, um, yeah, my main domain slash greeting slash, for example, I think Suomi. Uh, and that is just a dumb, um, a dumb component. It doesn't do anything and has the string here, up here, uh, just hard coded in there. But it's, it's a start. Okay, so we created a new page. Now we need to somehow include it on our website flow, I guess. We want to link from the previous page we had or any previous page we had to the new page. So how do we do that? So we use next link. Next link is a component coming directly from, from the next uh, package and we'll just uh, create a link to a new um, to a new page. Um, next link comes with a surprise, uh, which is, um, it brings us, it provides um, link prefetching without us needing to do anything. So uh, this means that when the link is on the viewport, it will be detected and the next path, and the next path uh, will be automatically preloaded by the browser. Okay, so we have a second, um, too many requests. My God, okay, yeah, now it works. Okay, so we have a second example here. Um, I have the, this that you are seeing in, on the screen is the index.view. Um, okay, so maybe a bit too big. Okay, so as you can see, I still don't have much in my script uh, tag, but in my template tag, I have a nux link, link into slash greetings slash English uh, with a text. And then um, I have also a greetings uh, language here that also doesn't do much still. Um, so what I can do now is I can go from my, in my uh, website from the home page, which would be this one without any, any trailing uh, thing, any, anything in the path, to just uh, click and it will navigate to greeting slash English and it will show whatever we have on, on this component. Okay, not bad. This was all basically free. Okay, um, yeah, the new page is basically doing nothing so far, which is not great. Uh, so now we can do the new page uh, somehow dynamic. So as I said before, um, 
the, par the root parameters uh, will be exposed to the component uh, through these dollar route uh, dot params. So for example, we can access them from the script uh, tag, from the script part, <coughs> sorry, from the script part of our um, component, or we can also use that parameter directly in our markup, like that. But um, you are using that on its own, using the parameter on its own to don't do much is not very exciting. So what we can do is we can um, use some lifecycle methods uh, to react to whatever parameter we get from the URL. Uh, so for example, uh, we have uh, the async data, async, async data uh, lifecycle method, which is something not normally present in view. This is also coming from Nuxt. Um, and uh, we can access the parameters from within the async data um, method to do something. In this case, I'm just creating a new language map. Uh, then I'm, I'm setting up one English uh, translation or greeting. Um, and then when I, get, uh, when I get the parameters, I'm just returning. So async data has to return something. And then I can use it on my view. Okay, so once it starts, come on. Okay, so now I have uh -huh. I have on my path up there, I have uh, slash greetings slash English, uh, and I said uh, on, the, on my component that the translation or the greeting in English should be hello, IGS, London, blah, blah, blah. Um, so now my, as you can see here in the template, I am using, I am accessing on one hand the parameters coming from the route, so in this case language, um, and um, this language obviously is this language, that's how Next knows who, what to use exactly, and then uh, in the async data, um, let me see if I can um, go back here, okay, in the async data, I am returning this property of the object, translated greetings that I am using then in the template itself. So it will show the correct, um, the correct translation. So now I have two, I have English and Spanish. So I can also go from English or from greeted, greetings slash English to greetings slash Spanish. And it will just show the Spanish version of it. This is currently all done in the server side because async data runs basically on the server side. Okay. There's a trick um, or a gotcha. Um, since since uh, async data runs on the server side, <coughs> we cannot use this to access uh, the context of the component because the component is not, is not there yet. And so we, that's why if you remember and if we look back to the code itself, um, here we are not using these, where is it again? Yeah, these params is actually coming from within the arguments of the async that data method because it's, it's not accessible through the normal path of these dot route dot uh, params. Okay, and um, also another gotcha, quite, quite understandable, I think, is that async data is only available in pages, not in tile components. 
So if you need to access something from within a tile component, um, you need to probably make the request in the page and then pass it as props. Okay, some other stuff that um, we can do in Nuxt is using custom head tags. Um, so we can do it both ways. We can both have a global um, head tag uh, that we can configure in the nuxt.config.js file. We will uh, talk about that later. Um, so that, so as you can see in the next uh, config file, we can set some global, maybe global title, uh, global description, uh, and then in the component, we can override the, um, the settings, the global settings, with things specific to that component, rather to that page. It's uh, in this case, uh, in the description, and I think in a few more cases, it's quite important to use the property uh, HID. Uh, and this is because if we don't do that, then Nux will, um, in this case, will append and we will have two descriptions at the same time in the head, which is not great. So the HID tells um, Nux to, to use that uh, meta tag and replace the original one or the global one. Okay, so let's see. Yes, okay, you won't be able to see this, I guess, because there's no um, title here. Um, but we have uh, somewhere the, um, where is it? Yeah, we have the next file here. Mm -hmm. We have the next uh, config file here that's setting some properties uh, of, the, of the head. So we have a title and we have also, of course, you can put in the head property, uh, you can put, or in the head object, you can put any kind of uh, meta tag that you want to use in your page. In this case, yeah, the car set and the viewport, that kind of stuff. And we can have a global, um, a global description, for example. Uh, and a global title, and then we just um, override it here. And the good thing is that we can also use the, for example, the parameters coming from uh, from the router, or we could maybe make an um, API request from here to fill in the description. So, for example, in Car2Go, in the Car2Go website. Um, in, in our team, we have a CEO, um, a CEO person, <laughs> a CEO specialist that loves to write custom descriptions and personalize the content and uh, or the content of the description and the title and that kind of stuff. We handle all that in the CMS. So we have um, some fields for him to fill, for example, a description for a page. And then we just populate them, populate those tags from within the async uh, data method, for example, so that um, he can actually customize the description tag, for example, from the CMS. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, some more things um, about the head, um, about the head functionality. The child components can actually override the head settings of their parents. Uh, and again, the point of the HID property is to avoid duplication of tags. So they get overridden in, instead of just added. And um, and from within a component, we can also modify any, basically any head um, element. So anything that we can put in a, in a head tag, 
we can also set, set, it, set them uh, from within the component. So for example, canonical links, uh, lang attributes, we can even inject script tags. Uh, we can set up maybe, I've never seen this myself, but um, we can also have a no script uh, version of the page. Okay, so now let's say that the HTML has been delivered to the browser and um, probably the user would like to do something with it. Uh, maybe click somewhere or navigate to a different page or something like that. So how we do that or how, the, how Nuxt and the browser does that is through client-side hydration. Client-side hydration is, I put a quote there because I, it's kind of hard for me to explain, but it's the process where a static HTML is transformed in the client-side into a full SPA. And that includes, of course, navigation. So, a server-side generated or server-side rendered uh, HTML is transformed into an SPA once it's in the browser. This, in my opinion, is amazing uh, because it means that you can have both the, the best of both worlds. You can have server-side rendering for SEO uh, purposes and um, super fast, uh, first meaningful paint, that kind of stuff. But then you let the user navigate through your website uh, without reloading the whole page, which is pretty nice. Okay, so a quick demo here. I hope it works. Um, I'm setting here uh, in the template, I have a server-side message property and a client-side message property. The server-side um, server message, I'm setting it on the async data method which runs on the server, uh, the data, or sorry, the client side message, I'm sending it directly on the browser. So it doesn't run on the server, it just runs uh, on the data property or data method and then on mounted I set a timeout of five seconds and I replace uh, the message that I had there. This means that if I did it right, um, <clears throat> the first message will come from the server and it will be shown immediately. The second one will be triggered directly in the client and it will have a delay of five seconds. So if I reload this page, because that probably happened already, if I reload this, yes, I see hello from server, but I see waiting, which is my initial state. And then after five seconds, it gets uh, moved or translated into hello from the client. Okay, so yeah, the typical use case for this, uh, for a, I guess, a server-side rendered um, web page that transforms itself magically into an SPA. Um, I guess it's uh, something like this. So you have a server and it delivers static HTML with markup and styling for the first visited page for a user. So the first uh, entry point of a user into our website will be served from the, from the server side renderer. Uh, once the application is hydrated on client side, then the interactivity, uh, for example, navigating or and the content for the new pages will be triggered directly from the client side. Okay, this um, is a fun thing uh, that I think we will all find at some point using Nux.js, which is at some point you get the error of window is undefined. Um, of course, this is because the JavaScript code that we are writing in our components has to run from both the server and the client because this is isomorphic, so universal JavaScript. So the same code base runs in both contexts. 
But of course, there's no window object or any other browser API when we run in Node.js. Uh, there's a few of uh, there are there are a few solutions to to avoid this. Uh, one is using uh, a component that also comes from Vue.js, which is no SSR. So whatever we put in inside the, the no SSR component uh, will only be rendered on the client side, not on the server side. So we will not run into this window is only fine stuff. That's one thing we can do. Uh, we can also use um, uh, something like an um, environment variable, I guess, not really, but something like that. Uh, so Nux will, will um, expose uh, and will let us know if we are running on the server or on the browser uh, using process.client and process.server, I guess. Um, so when we are running on the client, on the browser, process.client will be true. So if we are in the process.client, if we are in the browser, then it's safe to use window, a window object. We, of course, can use uh, also process.server to detect if we are running on the server. Uh, the next thing, or the last uh, method we have to avoid this is uh, if we are using a plugin that depends on window, uh, on the window object, and maybe somebody's using some um, carousel or something like that, I don't know. Um, so we can define once, when we add the plugin to the next uh, config file, we can define if the plugin should work in both environments or only on the client or only on the server. Okay, um, there's an interesting experiment. I only uh, tried very um, briefly, um, but it's, I think it, it is something that can uh, improve a lot our, the perceived performance of our websites, which is lazy hydration. So the point is that, let's imagine we have a website with, uh, with a bunch of different components, maybe the header is a component, maybe we have a logo component, maybe we have a footer component. I assume that in most um, cases, in most companies and in most uh, projects, uh, many of these components are actually quite dumb and they don't do anything. Like they are only maybe a collection of links if you have a footer in there, uh, as is at least our case. Um, so we really don't need any, let's say, JavaScript provided interactivity in those. Uh, so it makes no sense to delay the time to interactive of a user uh, trying to hydrate those components. Uh, or at least it will be great if, uh, for example, the footer, which would be the last thing that the user notices or tries to interact with, uh, can be hydrated with, a, with less priority than maybe something above the fold. So the idea is to uh, grab those or decide whether those presentational or just some components uh, decide whether they should hydrate or not, and whether or in what order they should be hydrated. Uh, of course, if we combine these with uh, code splitting and dynamic imports, I think this is a really, really um, amazing tool, and uh, this is what we could do to enable something like lazy hydration, which is like a step further uh, lazy loading. There is a uh, view component uh, out there, view lazy hydration, which um, works. I only tried um, like uh, very, very fast uh, to use it, but seems to work pretty good for this. So this is something that you might uh, be interested in trying. Okay. 
Um, what about state management? Um, I understand that you guys, uh, the ones that you of you that are um, already using Vue, you are probably using Vuex also. For the rest of you, uh, Vuex is basically Redux, only much better. <laughs> Uh, okay, it's maybe not much better, but it's, in my opinion, much easier to, uh, to maintain, to write, uh, to write code. Uh, for me, it just makes sense. But anyway, um, Nuxt.js also has, uh, apart from the pages folder, also gives us a store folder out of the box when we run the boilerplate, when we run the scaffold it will give us a store folder. Whatever we put in that store will be transformed into Vuex modules. So in, in basically, in this case, we will have an index.js file which will be transformed into our root module. And then we will have, in this case, module one and module two, super amazing naming, uh, which will be transformed into namespace modules with the same name, so module one and module two. That way, you don't have to do any piping or plumbing, uh, and you just have namespace modules for your, st for your state, and that's it, it just works. Also, of course, if you want to use, I mean, you are not forced to use um, store management or state management. You, you are not forced to use uh, UX here. If you just remove the store folder, or you, j you have it empty, then, you don't have any state management. Uh, if you do have uh, if you do have something in your store folder, then at least you need an index.js file to act as your root module because otherwise it won't work. Okay, once we decide that we actually want state management, uh, the next step is probably to move away maybe not completely, but at least some stuff, move away from async data to fetch. Fetch is another lifecycle uh, method uh, given by uh, Nuxt, um, which is not there in view, of course. And it serves to dispatch actions on the server side. So async data is not tied to the store and cannot, be, cannot interact with the store. Fetch, on the other hand, can interact with the store, so you can dispatch actions from there. Um, of course, you can use both of them, uh, both fetch and async data at the same time. If uh, your page has something that you don't want to put in the store, then you can use async data. Um, and again, as async data, fetch only works in pages, not in tile components. And again, as just the same as async data. Fetch cannot access the context of your component because it's not, it's, it's not uh, instantiated, so you cannot use this. So this is how you use fetch, basically. I have a, a component here, well, my old component, uh, which I just uh, refactor to use fetch instead of facing data. And fetch also receives the store as a, as a parameter, as a, an argument, as well as the old params uh, object. So then using store, I can just dispatch whatever actions I want. And of course, my greetings uh, module uh, we'll have an action, translate greeting. Uh, this is quite useful stuff, so it will commit uh, mutation, receiving the parameter from, from my component, and then the mutation will change the state. That's not a big deal. So same thing than before. If, uh, if we go to English, then it will work. If we go to um, Spanish, then it will also work with different uh, data. The map is now in the store. It, makes, it kind of makes sense. 
So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's uh, yet another lifecycle method introduced by uh, Nuxt, which is Nuxt server init. Uh, this lifecycle method is only available on the on the root module, on the index.js file of your store, and it only runs once. It has access to the store, but only runs once when the server starts. Kind of easy to uh, understand by the name. And it's um, supposedly, or I guess it's designed to grab whatever, you, whatever data you need to grab to actually inst uh, initialize your server, your application. So for example, if you have translations, uh, if you have any configurations, uh, you can grab them from, from the Nux server init uh, method. Okay, awesome. What else can we do with uh, Nux? Okay, we took a quick look at the config file. Um, so, as again, Nux tries to favor convention over configuration, but everything is configurable anyway. Uh, so how we configure Nuxt is through the config file, through nuxt.config.js. Uh, we can set environment variables in there, we can uh, change the configuration of our router, we can change the source directory, for example. This is something I like to do because I don't know if you remember or, or if you realize, but when we, when we run a normal uh, create next app, it puts all the code in there instead of in the source folder, uh, which I really don't like. Um, so you can configure that, that also in, uh, in the config file. You can import uh, global styles. Uh, for example, if you use normal ICSS or uh, bootstrap or whatever, you can put them uh, in the config JS file and then they will be loaded um, as global styles. You can do a bunch of things in there. Um, there are also modules. So modules are kind of plugins for Nuxt, I guess. Um, they are used to extend the functionality. Um, and there are some official and some community maintained. Uh, you only have to find the one you want to use it, then install it, then add it to the modules uh, property in, or I think it's actually an array, in, uh, in the config file, and then it just works. Uh, one important module is HTTP, the, the module to make HTTP requests. Um, of course, this is because the browsers can make uh, just plain uh, HTTP requests at least the modern browsers with the, with the fetch uh, API, but node uh, servers cannot. Uh, of course, you can, uh, but it's too complex, I guess. I don't know anybody making um, requests in, um, in vanilla JavaScript in node. It's not something you want to do, I think. Um, so it's uh, a good idea probably to use a module for that. Uh, there are two official ones. Uh, one, it's, it's called HTTP. Uh, it extends uh, QI universal. Uh, and the other one is the old, our old friend Axios. And um, the good thing is that if you bootstrap your application with create next app, they just work. They, they, one of them, I, I'm not sure which one, depending on, the, on your version, I guess, but one of them is installed and configured, so it just works out of the box. Uh, there's a catch also, um, is cross-domain. So remember that our code runs on both the server and the client. So the first time we visit a page, it's served from the server. So any HTTP requests, don't uh, the, the cross-domain protection don't apply because the request is made from the server. But once you try to navigate to a different page, then that's, that request is made from the client. So now you have cross-domain issues. How you solve those? Of course, with a proxy or 
serving everything from the same domain, which is not very um, convenient when you are uh, developing. So you can have a development uh, proxy and you just do it like this. So you add a proxy property on your Nux config file and, um, and that's it, it works. There are also some other very cool modules. Um, so for example, PWA, which comes also from uh, Create Next App. Uh, we have the auth module, which uh, obviously serves to protect some routes maybe uh, in, your, in your application. We have a component cache module, which allows us to obviously cache uh, compile content um, components to have super fast or faster B4 lists. Uh, we have the Google Tag Manager where we can put our Google um, Analytics uh, stuff in there and it also just works. We have ng-rock um, to expose our local host through a tunnel to the outside world. Uh, yeah, a bunch of super nice modules that just works. Okay, last uh, thing, I think, uh, layouts. Layouts are a way for Nuxt to set up some kind of page skeleton. So this means we can have, we normally will have a, a default one. We can have several of them depending on the type of page we want to show. Uh, so we can customize the header, the footer, whatever, um, bigger part of the, um, of the page. We need, of course, the next um, component um, or tag in the, pay in the layout so that the page is actually rendered. And the page itself can define which, which layout it wants to use. Uh, so normally the default uh, one is just like that, a, a, a next uh, tag inside the template, where we could have, for example, a one with a header uh, and the header will always be the same and then the only thing changing, th changing through the different pages will be whatever is inside the main. Uh, we could have one with sidebar. Um, the important thing is that they all have to show or include the next, um, the next tag. Um, we can assign custom layouts to different pages, as I said, so each page can decide which uh, layout it wants to use. Uh, we just use the layout property of the, of the component. If there's no layout property, then default is assumed. Some stuff that we get for free, but we can still customize. The loading indicator. If we don't do anything, then Nux provides a loading indicator, which is a small loading bar on top of the page. <coughs> We can define, we can write um, a loading component and then define it on, on the config file so that uh, Nux will use that one instead of the def default one. Uh, we can customize error pages. Also, they come out of the box, but they look ugly. Uh, so you probably want to do that. This is kind of a special case because it's really uh, the code for the error pages is really a component because it accepts props. Actually, it only accepts one prop and you have to use it, it's the error, but then, but has to live inside the pages folder. Uh, so it's kind of a special case, um, but you can just customize your error page. And last, probably, um, I don't think we have time for showing the code, but I can tell you that you can also tr um, customize your your page transitions, uh, Nuxt.js, I think it has a fade by default between when you navigate on the client side between different uh, pages, but you can always uh, change your, yeah, your transition. Uh, you can move uh, to, yeah, okay. It doesn't matter, it's too long. Okay, thank you guys.